so he had, he had taken advantage of his wife's Angela's absence to initiate a romantic relationship with the married Miss Eastburn. So Katie had rebutted his offer and Hennis goes to kill him and then his two, uh, her two other children. In addition, the prosecution accounts and the transactions resulting from Katie's stolen ATM card. And they also added like a psychological effects to strengthen the case, saying that uh, there was really, really graphic, you know, crime scene photographs and they showed them to the jury. So like really stress how, you know, terrifying, like he bludgeoned of deliberation from the jury, they found him guilty of three counts of first-degree murder and one count of rape. On July 8, he was subsequently sentenced to death. Hennis was then transferred to death row at the Central Prison in Raleigh, North Carolina. While in prison, he receives an anonymous letter claiming responsibility for the Eastburn murders, and the letter reads, Dear Mr. Hennis, I did the crime. I murdered the Eastburns. Sorry, you're doing dot dot the time. I'll be safely out of North Carolina when you read this. Thanks, Mr. X. So the anonymous letter was born, postmarked uh, 8th of July, the date of his sentencing, and it was also sent to the sheriff sheriff's office kind of to mess with their minds you know you know he's sentenced now he's sentenced to death but does the story stop there no this goes on for quite a few years it doesn't end here in 1988 Hennessy's defense lawyer Gerald Beaver actually manages to successfully appeal conviction in the North Carolina Supreme Court. He argues that the numerous graphic crime scene videos that the prosecution had shown the jury had undutifully influenced them against his client. He's basically like, you showed these crime scene photos, but they skewed the opinion of the jury. He did not actually do the murders. You just made him look like he did it. Okay. And then, the judges ruled by a margin of 5-2 to two in Hennessy's favor, so he got a chance to retrial to his case. According to Beaver, his defense lawyer, this marked the first time that a prisoner on death row in North Carolina had been granted a new trial. During the retrial that was held in April 1989, and Richardson represented Hennis, while the prosecution consisted of Calvin Collier and John Dixon, who was replaced, who had replaced Van Story. The defense challenged the prosecution's witness, witnesses and evidence. They focused on star witness Cone's criminal offenses following the first trial, so they were kind of like, you know, your witness is not that reliable because he has been charged before, which is a very shitty, <laughs> like, what? 
of 2009, he appealed against the court. 
for that.